All right, you guys, this is Ross. So I thought in today's video, we would look at my melon plants, really wrap up my final season thoughts on these melon varieties. I know some of you guys are gonna wanna know a month from now or whatever it is, hey Ross, what happened to the melons? Where's the update? Well, as you can see by looking at these plants, they're all infected by Fusarium wilt. And this was really, if you guys rewind my videos about two years ago, you, get, you can recall that I grew a lot of different melon varieties two years ago. We grew them vertically, and inevitably all of them ended up getting Fusarium wilt. And we talked about how to prevent that. We talked about actually grafting them on a, a squash rootstock. We tried that this year, had very limited success. It was the first year we've ever done that. We also talked about spraying silica, or Dynagrow Protect is the product that I like to use. That helps boost the natural immune systems of these plants, makes them more disease and pest resistant. We did not spray them um, really at all for the most part. I gave them maybe one or two sprays and it, it just really wasn't enough. These plants really needed to be sprayed a lot more often than I, I had done. Um, and maybe, you know, who's to say it would have worked? Who's to say it wouldn't have worked? Not entirely sure, but you know, now that it's almost mid-August, we're kind of just at an end to the season. And that these plants now, because they have so much of this Fusarium wilt, they're not getting the photosynthesis that they need to actually sweeten up these fruits. I mean, that's really how, what photosynthesis does, right? The sunlight hits these leaves, it produces the sugars, the carbohydrates that then get pumped into this fruit. But if you look up this plant, the leaves are just completely destroyed. And it's all because of this disease, Fusarium wilt. And it's unfortunate because I have about 20 different varieties here, all in an effort to find, well, Ross, which one was the best? Which one was the tastiest? Which one was sweet? I wanted to grow the sweetest melons possible to experience that amazing experience I had in Japan that inspired me really on this melon journey to start growing melons at home. You know, they're charging 10, 80, $100 per melon in Japan. I mean, that's how good they are. And why spend all that amount of money when you can probably do this at home? Obviously, maybe some of you guys have a lot easier chances than I have. But if we can get the disease right, uh, we should have reasonable success, right? Well, not really, because so far this season, and really the four years now that I've been growing melons, I've never really produced a very sweet melon. You know, most of the time they're fragrant, they're relatively tasty, but they're not giving me that wow factor. When you ripen a nice piece of fruit on your, your peach tree or your fig tree or whatever it is, and you, you get it to the most perfect optimal ripeness, you pick it, you taste it, you bite it, and you just, you can't help but say, wow. I'm not getting that guys. These are not, these fruits are not producing enough sugars to really have me in that wow experience that I'm looking for. Um, so, you know, long story short is that I think even barring all of this disease, I think even barring maybe a little bit more rain than you could say we've had on average, even though we ha always have rainy seasons in July and always, always rainy in August, when these melons are gonna be ripe. And you know, you can make an argument that without all that bad stuff, I don't think even in this location, I will produce a high quality melon that I'm looking for. I just won't. You know, the amount of sunlight hours, is just not enough. I only get about eight hours of light here in this spot. This is unfortunately, even with the eight hours, it's the sunniest, and warmest spot of my yard. It's the perfect spot for growing melons. Yet, I still don't get enough hours of light. Now, I will bet you any amount of money that if I were to plant melon seeds in somebody else's yard, even if it's five minutes, one minute away, but they had sunlight all day versus my, my yard here only gets light half the day, I would bet you any amount of money that the, the fruits that come out of those plants and their yard would be so much more sweet than the varieties here or the, the melons that I'm growing here. So what's even crazier, by the way, is that, you know, like I said, barring disease, barring a little bit of rain, but we're also growing, by the way, the sweetest melon varieties you could grow. 
right here in my hand is a Petit Gris de Rene. It isn't Petit Gris de Rene. This is the hybrid version of it that Johnny's offers. I spent a lot of money on this seed. It's called Grisolette. But it's supposed to have the same qualities of flavor, sweetness, taste, fragrance, but it's supposed to have a better disease package, more resistances to Fusarium wilt, and it's supposed to be much more productive and vigorous and just an overall better, easier plant to grow. So tasting this, I will attest that actually it is the sweetest and tastiest melon I've ever grown. The unfortunate part about this is that it's still not of the sweetness level that it should be at. And I'll taste it again. You could, sell, you could really tell the potential of this thing. And it's not like, again, it wasn't picked at the wrong time. You know, this is about as ripe as it's gonna get without going bad on me. And then it is of, of course, the tastiest melon variety you could grow, basically. And yet it's still not of that wowness, sweetness factor that I'm looking for. So it's just, you know, overall, very upsetting, very discouraging. And uh, for anyone out there that is having similar problems to me, you know, this might be the, the same thing that's happening to you is that you're just not growing them in, in enough sunlight or something like that. Even growing them vertically, you could imagine they have access to a little bit more sunlight instead of horizontal space along the ground. Now they have access to some vertical space, vertical sunlight. It's just not enough. And, um, you know, what I'm going to do next year, I think, to really test this, to really make sure that this is the answer, is I think next year we're, we're going to grow some in the ground again. I think I'm going to limit the number of varieties to really only Fusarium wilt resistant varieties so that we're not really having such a huge problem with these, spreading it from one plant to the other. In the future, we'll try different varieties when I have more space and more room to grow them. But I will also, in addition to that, I will grow them in a pot, in a container. By growing them in a container, by the way, what you can do is 100% control the water that the melons receive. And that should definitely give you sweeter fruits. So, Someone mentioned in our last melon video is that it's all in the water, Ross. It's not necessarily the sun. And I would agree with you. The water is so critical, which is why I think it's great to grow something like figs in containers because you can 100% control that water and really sweeten up those fruits, have a much higher bricks, much higher quality. So for me, what I will do next year, I think, is grow the seeds in a container like this and then I will put a plastic bag, a trash bag, over top of the top of the pot. And then inside the pot will be my drip irrigation. Just like I do with all my other, my, all my other potted plants. So I can control 100% of the water that goes in and none of the excess from rain that we inevitably get every year that could be in higher quantities to really ruin the fruits. So. We'll be able to know, I guess, next year. What I'm saying is that we'll be able to know if it's the water, we'll be able to know if it's the sunlight, and just very short and, and sweet and easily know, you know, what the real problem was. And maybe instead, if it's not the sunlight, as an example, maybe all I have to do is plant them higher above grade. Maybe plant them in, in a raised bed or plant them in a mound, something that's really well draining or you know, we do have heavy clay here. And although I amend the soil, I add compost and things on this, it is still heavy. I never have to water this. I've never watered the soil here for the most part. I mean, I did water these plants in when I transplanted them, but that was it. You know, they, they from that point on, just have enough water to do their thing for the rest of the season. There's ample water, there's too much water. So yeah, maybe it is the water, maybe it's the sunlight, but the point is, guys, is that we're, we're not getting the sweetness of the fruits that we're looking for. Even this other variety here, it's called Zata, Italian heirloom melon. It's supposed to be very, very tasty. Cantaloupe, it's just one of the better tasting melons. And yeah, I'm just not getting the sweetness that I, I should be. Uh, I put in all this work to try to find the sweetest melons and grow the sweetest melons I could. And, even try grafting them and it's just 
really it's not looking good. So this one here might be ripe relatively soon or maybe it even is. I have to look up and see if it's a slip skin or not. Some people are worried about the, you know, growing them vertically. That really hasn't been a problem at all. My biggest concern really at this point has been about the wilt, the disease, the lack of sun or too much water. So that's kind of my last little thoughts here, guys, is that the season's re relatively over at this point. If I get anything at this point that's sweet, I'll let you guys know, but for the most part, we're, not, we're probably not gonna get anything else that's reasonable quality, and uh, I'm just gonna chalk this season up to another loss, another learning experience. And maybe by year five, we'll get this, <laughs> we'll get this thing straightened out. Maybe we'll learn if it's the sun, we'll learn if it's the water, and we'll see you guys for the next one, all right? Thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.